So a few weeks ago, I actually moved from India to London. Here the things are going to be a bit because here your contribution goes to something called as national insurance and the UK based pension scheme. Majority of the companies are going to follow a very similar compensation breakup, but they don't have the clarity on what to actually ask for the compensation. Two of the major components that is taxes plus the expenses. These are also way higher in UK when you compare that to India. The taxes you pay, you don't get anything back and it can go up till around Bangalore or Mumbai then the expenses are going to be on the higher side. Now, if you see in India, there are a lot of variable type of bonuses that companies actually offer. You are going to get relocation bonus considering that you are, let's say, moving from India to, let's say, UK. In UK, there are a lot of companies that are still hiring for uh, You will find lack of opportunities here in UK. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, a few weeks ago, I actually moved from India to London for my new software engineering job. And I thought it would be a great idea to actually create a video and do a good comparison and I would say in-depth comparison around how exactly the salary or the comp structures for software engineering jobs look like in India when compared to something like UK, right? So because of the fact that you are in a different country, there can be a lot of things that can be new for you. And a lot of time what happens is that people do keep on, uh, I would say, interviewing for companies overseas, but they don't have the clarity on what to actually ask for the compensation, right? And if you see, there's not a lot of details actually available if you are applying for UK based startups or let's say somewhere around in Europe. So what I'm going to do is based on my experience, I'm going to track down all the important pointers and do a in-depth comparison on how exactly the comp looks like if you are doing a software engineering job in India when compared to that of somewhere in UK specifically I am in London so I, a lot of majority of the pointers that I have actually accumulated are related to that but it's gonna be more or less in general the same across the UK so without any further ado let's just start but before starting the video if you have not yet subscribed to the channel do consider subscribing because we are going to put some really awesome content coming up ahead that is going to be really very helpful for your upcoming software engineering career so let's just start so before moving forward in the video i would like to talk about the new system design 2.0 cohort that we have recently launched if you are somebody who is actually willing to apply for a lot of product based companies and you are technically confused on where to actually prepare for low level design, high level design and machine coding rounds, then you are actually at the right place. In the new system design cohort, we are going to actually include all the relevant concepts around high level design, low level design, machine coding and this time we have kept it kind of like bigger and better. This time we have specifically added a lot of company specific interview problem solving both in HLD and LLD. We have added interesting concepts around distributed system like Lampot clock, vector clock, consensus algorithms and whatnot. The complete curriculum of this system design 2.0 cohort is mentioned in the link in the description section below. You can use this coupon code coming on your screen to get massive discounts altogether. There is a dedicated video on the channel where you can find all the details regarding the course syllabus. But what I can assure you is based on my experience working as a software engineer and all of the interviews that I have given, this is going to be a very comprehensive course where we are going to talk about all the relevant things that is going to be necessary, not just for you to crack software engineer interviews, but also work as a software engineer. So do check out all the links in the description section below. Uh, all the course syllabus, all the dates, everything necessary is already mentioned there. So now let's come back to the video. So see, first of all, you have to uh, more or less understand that if you are going to work as a software engineer in some tech company, then majority of the companies are going to follow a very similar compensation breakup. That is, there is going to be a base component that is going to be your every month in hand salary that is going to be credited in your bank account. And of course, there will be corresponding tax deductions on this, right? So taxes in India is different than taxes in UK. So you have to definitely keep that in mind. Apart from that, there is bonus based structures. So there are different different type of bonuses that you are going to find. Let's say if you are doing a job in India, like joining bonus, retention bonus, annual performance bonus, relocation bonus and whatnot, right? Similar kind of bonus based structures exist in UK as well with a few changes here and there. Then comes the third part that is going to be your stock options. 
in India as well, if you are working in a company which is let's say not listed, then they are going to offer you a couple of ESOPs, which is going to be vested across a few years. And if you're working in a listed company, something like let's say Microsoft or Google, something like that, then they are going to offer you RSUs. Similar kind of a structure you are going to technically find here as well. Right. So these are the major components. Now a few things that actually change when you see things with respect to UK and in India is that in India that your composition also includes a couple of things around your PF contributions and retirals as well. Here the things are going to be a bit different because here your contribution goes to something called as national insurance and the UK based pension scheme. So we are going to take a good comparison around that. So now if let's say you are working and this or uh, whatever uh, figures I'm talking about, I'll try to keep uh, let's say a few startups and a few I would say listed fan companies in mind so that you can get a good idea around the comparison. So let's say if you are working in India and you are working let's say a mid-sized startup, then you can and assuming that you are working as a mid-level software engineer that is something around SD2, then you can expect your base salary to be somewhere around 25 lakhs to 40 lakhs, right? I'm assuming that this is uh, this figure that I'm uh, bringing from is going to be from a good prod based startups, right? Of course, the salaries for same level can vary a lot in different different companies. But this is some band that you can very easily, uh, I would say, find out that your salary can range starting from 22 to 25. And that can go up to 40, right? For example, a few friends of mine are actually working in a few startups, and they draw salary around 33 to 34 in terms of the base component altogether. If you see the similar range when you compare that to UK, in UK that range is going to be starting from somewhere around 80,000 pounds and it can go up till around 120 to 130,000 pounds altogether. Now this is again going to be varying a lot because uh, smaller uh, startups which have let's say which are just uh, growing up and have lesser valuations are going to let's say offer you somewhere around 85 to 90,000 pounds and then the startups which have a very high valuation and um, I would say are relatively doing very good are going to offer you somewhere around 120,000 or 125,000 as well right so this is the range that you can expect. Now, of course, it seems very good that, okay, the salary is way higher in UK, but you have to keep one thing in mind that two of the major component that is taxes plus the expenses. These are also way higher in UK when you compare that to India. For example, if you see the highest tax band in India is around 30%, right? Here also there is band based structure, but that goes around 40% altogether in UK. Plus the overall living expense is going to be very, very different. If you live in cities like, let's say Delhi or let I would say Hyderabad, then you can say that, okay, you are still having a very decent, um, I would say, or the expenses are not that high. But if you see cities like Bangalore or Mumbai, then the expenses are going to be on the higher side. But overall, if you even compare your expenses in Bangalore and Mumbai, then also your expenses that are going to be in London are going to be extremely, extremely high because the rent here is going to be extremely on the higher end, right? So you have to also keep that thing in mind. But yes, the overall comp structure that you will see in terms of base is going to be on the higher end in UK. Now, if you see in India, there are a lot of variable type of bonuses that companies actually offer. A lot of time to, in order to make sure that companies are able to hire good talent, they offer good and very hefty joining bonuses. And sometimes the joining bonuses are also split such that some part of the joining bonus you get immediately when you join and some part you get as a retention bonus. Like let's say you spend one year in the company and then you get that, right? Then there is uh, annual performance bonuses as well that you see in India and an annual performance bonus, most of the startups can range from 8% to somewhere around 14 to 15%. It can go even higher if you are performing extremely good and you do redefine expectations, something like that, right? But if you uh, see the similar comparison in UK, now uh, not a lot of startups and companies are going to actually offer you joining bonuses. There are some fan companies that uh, do can offer, but uh, the major thing is that you need to actually show some competing offers and you need to have a really good candidature throughout your interviews. Then only they are going to consider some kind of joining bonuses. But majority of the startups are, startups are not going to mostly offer you any joining bonus. But performance bonus still exists here. And sometimes there can be even startups that do uh, performance bonus and, and uh, evaluations every six months as well. So that gives you a good buffer. But then the percentages in UK can be a bit different as well, right? It can even start from as low as 2-4% and can go as high as uh, I would say 14% as well. So this is a small change that you are going to find. Plus there is an interesting thing that in India you also get relocation bonus, right? Here also you are going to get relocation bonus considering that you are let's say moving from India to let's say UK, then it's a cross country shift, right? And that's a pretty big shift. 
so if some company is offering like it's uh, sponsoring your visa for uk then there is a good chance that they are also going to offer you relocation bonus and this relocation bonus is going to be pretty heavy because you are doing going to do a cross country shift right and from india to uk the pri uh, the price parity is also very very different so the relocation bonus can be very very high in uk as well right but again in order to set up your place here it's going to be a lot of spending that is going to go as well so you have to keep that thing in mind now i believe stock options have a similar contrast that as of base you also get stock options here in uk you get stock options in uh, india as well it's just that the amount of stock options that you are going to get in uk is going to be on the higher side when you compare that to india right for example let's say if a company is actually offering you per year stocks of let's say 20 lakh inr after vesting like it's not like four year vesting let's say every year you are going to get 20 lakh inr of vesting in india then you can definitely assume that here you are going to get somewhere around 50000 pounds per year vesting which is going to be definitely on the higher side right and four year you can of course multiply that with the four and create the comp structure so this is again considering that uk in uk you have the expenses a bit on the higher side so the overall comp you will see the total compensation the total ctc definitely goes on the higher side and stock options are definitely one of the key component of that and the vesting cycle some companies again follow 25% per year some company follow a kind of like cliff like structure that 5% 15% and more and some follow reverse cliff that okay first year you will get 40% and so on so these kind of different different vesting structures different different companies follow both in india as well as in uk as well So now similarly just like how you have in India here in UK as well you are going to get company paid i would say give private health insurance and a lot of companies do also give uh, dental uh, services and dental insurance as well right i have not seen a lot of companies in india following this but yes in india also you get a health insurance there uh, interestingly in india most of the time what i have seen is that in your company based health insurance you can very easily add up your families as well but in uk there will be some startups who are going to give you health insurance but it's going to only sponsor yours they are not going to sponsor any one of your family so that is an interesting thing that you can keep in mind apart from that if you see leaves and all so the number of leaves that you get in uk is going to be slightly on the higher end uh, this can majorly happen because the i would say the annual holidays are slightly less i guess 7 to 8 here which we easily get as 10 to 11 in uh, india so that's why the overall annual leaves that you get can be somewhere around 27 to 30 right in uk whereas the same annual leaves you get in india as 18 to 20 so this is a simple comparison and uh, apart from that there are a lot of regular benefits here also you have free food culture similar to that of india because most of the company bases are similar so those things you are going to see interestingly in uk there are a lot of companies that are still hiring for remote software engineers right and hybrid as well so there are you will find different contrast of companies you will find a lot of remote based startups you will you are going to find a few which are going to go hybrid one day a week two day a week three day a week variety of i would say office uh, work from office culture you are going to actually see interestingly but if you have to apply to uk then i would say go for those companies who are actually willing to also sponsor your visa unless you have uh, let's say a dependent visa that's going to be kind of like the uh, sorted thing for you right so this is something that you can think about in terms of the benefits that you are going to get now interestingly in uk some part of your salary and there is a, a national insurance as well that is the government backed uh, insurance uh, policies that is going to be for your health uh, insurance there is nothing like that in india so that is something that you can also keep in mind that here whatever taxes you are going to pay that actually goes as a contribution towards your national uh, insurance that there is nothing like that in india the taxes you pay you don't get anything back again that's a different topic altogether but keep that in contrast that the tax you pay actually has some value that is going to be added back to you right so this is this is kind of like the benefits part that you have to keep in mind so if i talk about in terms of savings perspective to be very honest because the taxes are way higher in uk like 40% and it can like the highest lab as far as i know can go even beyond like 45% as well if you earn more than like 150000 uh, pounds so i would say that it's not like if you will come to uk the amount of savings that you are going to have is going to like 2x it's it's not like that right um if and if i'm doing this comparison like head to head like one software engineer alone living somewhere in bangalore and one software engineer alone living somewhere let's say in london right because if you see rental prices here if you go to zone 1 or zone 2 like the more close you live to central london the rent prices are higher although there is a similar rent crisis in bangalore as well right but the amount of savings that you will eventually get is going to be more or less similar because um i would say 
the salaries are higher but again the taxes is also higher and the expenses are also higher as well but again it can depend on your lifestyle as well if you are uh, living in a certain way where you are able to save let's say a few uh, thousand pounds more then that's going to add up to your saving it's going to be up to you but i believe if you are coming let's say if you are two people uh, both of you earning then that can slightly give you an edge in uk because most of the if you see living expenses doesn't get doubled if you are two people living together but the overall savings can go on slightly on the higher side but again this is just an observation you guys can tell me in the comment section what do you feel and in terms of career growth i believe in india the startup ecosystem the overall tech ecosystem is booming a lot a lot of companies are shifting their bases from let's say us to india so definitely a lot of opportunities are there in india as well i believe uh, with respect to that the overall work life balance and everything is kind of like uh, not that great in india but if you see similar kind of a structure in uk as well that there are a lot of booming ai startups there are a lot of fintech startups that are doing extremely extremely good in this space and are very aggressively hiring as well so the overall tech ecosystem i believe in uk is also pretty great you will find tons and tons of opportunities if you are somebody who's uh, actually doing good in their current role and have a good shortlistable resume right so it's not like uh, you will find lack of opportunities here in uk but to be very honest if you ask me i believe that in india it's going to be slightly easier for you to find a job if you are already in india because here in uk uh, the majority of the constraint comes with respect to visa sponsorship right so that is something that you have to keep in mind but overall i believe with respect to career growth both of the places are going to be extremely good if you get an opportunity plus if you come to uk there is going to be definitely a vicinity to actually explore other places like europe and rest of the uk as well and that is um, i would say an advantage for a few people might not be that great of a uh, deal for some so that is something which which is pretty subjective so this was overall a uh, i would say head to head comparison around the comp structures that you can expect right i would highly recommend you to whenever you are actually interviewing for a company try to find as much as details as possible from the internet and figure out what are the comp structures that they are going to actually offer one interesting thing that happens in uk based companies is that they very clearly mention their comp structures on their website you just have to like make some effort and find that out like good 60 to 70% of them will do that so try to do that and see whether you are not getting low balled in your offer right so that's it for this particular video do let me know your thoughts uh, whether this was useful for you or not and if you want me to like put some similar kind of content around the comparison between the work life here in uk compared to that of india do let me know in the comment section i would be really happy to make all of them that being said let's wrap this particular video here we are going to meet soon in the next set of videos till then take care bye bye i am sanket singh signing off